you still feel like you're in that rough seas and you're about to go under. Mm -hmm. And think of this as that, that life vest floating by. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast. You're in for some fun because we're already laughing. Yes, and, we are. Um, <laughs> it's hard to even get rolling here because <laughs> there's just a lot of giggling going on. This is where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it. We are honest. We hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay, and we hope that you will consider yourself one of us now. Come on in here. We are going to talk it out today. And this is the real talk. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about Christmas, but we're not just doing the how to find good gifts, how to survive the season. You know, there's a lot of other people who are doing that stuff and doing it really well, and we're Mm -hmm. appreciative. But we're going to talk about the real Christmas, what this really needs to be about, and the difference between a an Instagram real Christmas, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) R-E-E-L, what everybody wants to show you and what many people are dealing with. So we just want to get down and dirty about what life is like sometimes and how Christmas is an important part of maybe changing our attitude Mm -hmm. about all that. Yeah, 100%. This Christmas is definitely one of those moments where like, until I became an adult, I, I didn't realize how reflective I should have been because it was always about like the gifts and the family and the da 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 and this and the stress of all of the things but the older I get and especially you know going through certain things in my life like now it's just like okay what is the real reason Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. and how can how can I there's been a lot of transformation happening in my life so like changing my mind focusing on what really matters focusing on the real reason yeah um and allowing me to also just be still and allow the change that's happening to really really hmm. take root, you know. Is it hard, because I know it's hard for me, to just be still? <laughs> I yeah, mean, like, the, those seem like, mm-hmm. well, doing nothing should be really easy, but that's the hardest thing to do sometimes. It's the hardest thing to do, it but is. honestly, this past Thanksgiving was, like, the start of it for me. This is the m- most uncomfortable mm-hmm. I've been in a holiday. This is mm-hmm. my first holiday, officially divorced. It was also my first um, Thanksgiving without my daughter. Mm-hmm. And so That's I did, hard it was, it was super hard. And yeah. honestly, I didn't just stay still cause I didn't want to just be in the house. So I did go on a trip. I've been traveling a lot just to see, to gain new perspective too. Like, mm-hmm. and, and even if it's just like a drive to like a couple hours away or if you're out just to keep my perspective open, because right now yeah. what Satan wants to do is to remind me of what was mm-hmm. because those memories in my head, are, they still come up all the time. Mm. Um, but he wants to remind me of what was and make me sad over it instead of having hope for the future. And so I'm doing things. I can't just sit around and just expect God to just make things happen. I'm doing things intentionally, like going on trips, going on, yeah. like, or, or seeing, well, going on hikes, going on walks, just looking at nature, just doing things outside the box. And I, I went, am so proud of you. You, know, really you have no idea what a big step this is. I <laughs> cannot stay in nature. <laughs> but you're doing it anyways. I've been so allergic. And <laughs> all of Which my life. does put so, a damper so on like, being outside. It's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, it, it is helping me mm-hmm. like, have a refreshed perspective on things. Um, and so this, this past Thanksgiving, even I, I went to LA. My brother lives there, but it was to see him and visit a couple of friends and do some music stuff. But it was also just to, to be able to be still in a different environment though. Mm-hmm. So so I, when you say be still, what, what does that mean to you? What do you do? Um, I didn't cook. Um, That's a big deal for you It's too. a big deal. It's usually a big part yeah, of Yeah, like it was hard. I'm used to, going to the grocery store, getting things that everybody likes and making sure that I get everything right. Um, So I didn't cook. Um, I didn't get a specific outfit, you know, Mm -hmm. like usually it's something themed that we kind of like dress alike on it because as we go and make our rounds around the different family members' houses and things like Mm -hmm. that. So didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I also just sat in my hotel room and I door dashed. Hmm. It was hard. Mm -hmm. It was difficult. Um, But I wrote down things I was grateful for, but I allowed myself to feel because even in all the moving around and what we show on social media and things like that, like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm crawling, (laughs) you know, I'm crawling my way to see, get, get hope and joy and, and find 
some type of feeling of normalcy again, Mm -hmm. which I don't think my normal will never be what normal was, but I wanted to feel it. I wanted to not be depressed. I eventually went out with and met up with a couple of friends and stuff, but that most of the day when I would usually be cooking and hosting and Mm -hmm. no, I just sat, I sat in the room and I was, I prayed and I I was thankful, journaled Mm -hmm. a little and um, ate my DoorDash. And I think one thing that is really important is that like that, that's hard. And it's okay to to stop for a second and say that was hard. Yeah. Because I've, it'd be so easy to say, but you did it and you're moving forward and great things are coming. But also like that was a hard day. Yeah. And I'm and sorry you had a hard day. Thank you. And um, that's one thing that I've really appreciated about us as a friend group mm-hmm. is like the Christianese. Like I didn't even realize how fluently I spoke it. Yeah. We're good you know, at it, aren't we? Yeah, and I used to be a person that I thought I was super real all along. I've always been a pretty like straight to the point, like direct person. But how much Christianese we use when it's like we got to stop doing that because people are hurting. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like thank you for saying that. Thank you for taking a moment to say like that was t- it was the toughest thing. It's hard. It's a tough thing to not have my kid with me. It's a tough thing to not have a spouse that grandja I don't want him no more. But like. I miss what we were. Sure. I miss what I thought we were. So, And I think that's so important because a lot of people, yeah. f- whether it's a situation yeah. like yours or many other types of situations, mm-hmm. whether they're alone or they've lost someone that they've loved or, or a job or you know financial issues, whatever it may be, health issues, there are a lot of people who are going into a holiday, going into Christmas, with big heartaches. Big, yeah. huge heartaches. And it's so easy to feel guilty for that because mm-hmm. this is supposed to be the time that everyone's happy. And it looks yeah. like everyone else's mm-hmm. because that's kind of the facade that everyone puts yeah. out there. And many people are. You know, I'm not trying to give the wrong impression. But as Christians, sometimes we, we I, I think we neglect to address those things yeah, and just say, Jesus is the reason for the season. And of course that's true. And we're, that's what we're going to talk about, why Jesus matters in all of this, mm-hmm. even through the pain. Yeah. And what we want to get at today is this truth that changes things mm-hmm. in our lives, in our celebration of Christmas, no matter what's going on, we've got to get to something real to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And so I was reading um, in, in John chapter one, and I love this so much because it's a whole different revelation of who this baby Jesus mm-hmm. is, because we like to leave Jesus as that little baby in the manger, but it started and it says, in the beginning was the word yeah, and the word was God. And when you think about the Word being the Bible and and God being always, always there, He gave us His Word. But at the same time, this is talking about Jesus coming as, as God and man and being a part of His Word, of what the Bible says. Now, all of that sounds very confusing. So what I love is this next part because it says, He was with God in the beginning. So there is no separating this baby Jesus from God. He's always been with God. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, darkness, nothing that we face, no evil will overcome Jesus in our lives. So the big questions are, okay, how how do I understand this? How do I access Jesus in my life? He's he's God, he's big, mm-hmm. and yet he wants to be a part of me. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, it's overwhelming when you it think is. about the dynormity of this whole concept of Emmanuel. That's what everybody says mm-hmm. at Christmas, God with us. Mm-hmm. Emmanuel's yeah. a big thing. Yeah. I think that's why I, one of the reasons I like the Christmas story so much is because... When when Jesus came to the earth, that made him he was he was human. So he is the same as me. So but he's Almighty God. So he, and he's majestic. And I when you picture God, I just picture like, you know, all the animals are worshiping him and the rocks cry out to him. But he chose to come 
through Jesus to the earth as a baby in a barn. He could have been born in the Ritz Carlton. Yeah, I love the but, Ritz. That right? Went. That's a better way to do it. <laughs> For my birthday. She's like, because <laughs> that's probably the way I would have gone. I would have come that way. <laughs> but he picked a barn. He did. But, but to me, that just shows how much he loves me because he's he was willing to get on my level. Like, I am exactly. just a human who is sometimes barely making it through the day. Yeah. And that the God yeah. of the universe came as a as a child so I could relate to him in some kind of way. At least that's how I see it. It's just it's a and way that, to connect. So that we can't ever say he doesn't understand. Exactly. Because he walked exactly this earth. Can I tell y'all something that I've, I was not not embarrassed, but low key embarrassed. But I'm, I've, I'm just gonna say it, <laughs> just because I don't want to say I've been in a negative place. But <laughs> Let's I'm just, just be not. As but, much. <laughs> but I'm not in the most like cookie cutter, like optimistic Jesus place that I used usually or used to be. You know, because life has hit hard, and so in that people, you know, when you're going through tough times, tough situations, people always like to bring up Job. And they like to bring I'm up, sorry. I love him. I know you do. Um, <laughs> Not me. And Joseph and his story. I was like, these stories are jacked up. I don't like these <laughs> stories. Like, I, I don't like them. And then people bring up Jesus. And, um, they, you know, he went through. He suffered. Like, and oh, please don't don't stone me. But I was like, Jesus chose. You use that word. That's what mm-hmm. triggered it. Because mm-hmm. I was like, Jesus chose to. He, he chose to come down as a baby in a barn and all that to, to save my life. Like, he chose. He knew. He knew that. It was going to happen. Like he knew that the end was going to be death, Mm -hmm. you know? And so when I think of that, (laughs) just my little negative self at times, you know, I'm like, I didn't choose any of this. Mm. But you can look at it the other way around too and say, he chose it in spite of knowing how bad it was going to be. True. I mean, that, I mean, I, I've looked at it all the ways. Oh, I'm sure you have. But I'm, I'm sure I'm you just have. Saying. No, I get it. You <laughs> have not chosen. You know, uh, you, when yeah. you think of that, but then when you think of the, the, the totality of the Christmas story, yeah. all of the people that still did not choose, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so that's why it's important to read the entire piece and not it just is. be like, yeah. oh, well, he chose, because that's how, like, that's where I want to end. I want to put period. He chose it. He knew he was going, you know, like, that's so silly. But you think of Mary. Who was just engaged to this dude, saying claiming she was a virgin. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she's knocked up. Like she didn't choose that. Then Joseph, he didn't chose to give the the knocked up girl as his, you know, yeah. as his who And he could have said, uh uh-uh, uh. I'm just I'm out. Yeah. You just think of all of the elements in there too that were like like change happens. Mm-hmm. Like life bring, breeds change. Yeah. And God hurts always, along the and way. And it hurts, it hurts along the way. And it's uncomfortable. And you have choices that you can make. Even though Jesus chose to come, you have a choice to go with it with joy or choose to stay with the person. You know, like you have all yeah. these choices. We have choices in it. But change does cause pivots. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, it causes you to have to like make some hard transitions and mm-hmm. hard, you know. So yeah. that was just a little petty no, moment that I had. No, that's an excellent the, point. Because I was just like, Jesus and I, and I always think about when, before Jesus was on the cross and he was asking his disciples to pray and they couldn't stay awake, which that would have been me. You know, I would have been like, <laughs> and, um, but he was in such pain and anguish because he knew what was coming, mm-hmm. that he was like sweating blood because he was so, so overwhelmed, yeah. I guess, by what was coming. And that's astounding. And so you're exactly right. You talk about, Many things are out of our control. Yeah. We can't choose so many things, but we can choose no matter no matter what the situation might be to say, "Oh, I'm going to look at this Jesus and see if there's anything good for me in this." Oh yeah. And and that's that's one of the things we really want to explain. So we're going to let Joyce talk a little bit about what it means this whole relationship with Jesus thing. Mm-hmm. Let's let's get outside of all of those words that we all hear so often and talk about what it really means and try to get very very real about it. So, let's see what Joyce has to say. And you know what, even if you've been born again for 20 years, you still need to hear what I'm saying because I'll tell you the truth, a lot of times we forget how amazing what we have really is. You're the home of God. You've been justified in Christ. You know what that means? Made just as if you've never sinned. Wow. Purchased 
bought with a preciousness, paid for with a price. You're not your own, but you belong to God. And it's not because of your works. It's not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anybody can possibly do. So no one can take glory and pride himself. I just want to ask you this morning, if you're sure that you've been born again, you say, well, Joyce, I go to church. You know what? I can go sit in my garage for a year and it'll never make me a car. <laughs> and just because you go sit in a church, if you could go three times a week, that doesn't make you a Christian. And that's, that's been a real fallacy, I think. I think to be honest with you, and I hope nobody's offended by this because I know we've got lots of pastor's wives here and I love the church and I encourage people all the time to go to church, but I think we've made too much out of do you go to church and not enough out of do you know Christ, do you have a personal intimate relationship with him, amen? And really, to be honest, if that's the case, if you know him, nobody's going to have to try to make you go to church. You're going to want to fellowship with other believers. You're going to want to be in the family of God. You're going to want to worship. You're going to want to learn. So when I say to somebody, are you a Christian? They tell me they go to church. Right away, I know we got a problem. So don't think just because you go to church that that means you're born again. Do you have the life of God on the inside of you? Can you sense a life on the inside of you? Do you believe that if Jesus came in the next 10 minutes that you would spend eternity with him? Forever and ever and ever. Isn't that comforting? I'm not afraid to die. I wouldn't care too much for the process if it was very painful, but I'm not afraid to die because I know where I'm going. And I want you to have that same assurance. Those are really good questions. So yeah. good. I mean, people who've been in the church for many, many years, mm -hmm. whatever the situation is, these are great questions mm -hmm. that, that gets down so much deeper than just, how was your Christmas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because maybe it wasn't good, you yeah. know? Um, maybe you're going through hard stuff and you're not looking forward to the next few days that are coming up here. Um, but... Let's talk about those things that are real and lasting in our life and ask the questions that really matter. Yeah. Where are we in this, in this whole thing? I've had a lot of conversations in the past year with people who don't, don't know the Lord um, about this topic. And like you're saying, like if you don't have non-Christian friends, then find some. Mm -hmm. I didn't for a long time. And so having these conversations, someone said, so are you religious? And I was like, I mean, I just really love Jesus. And but the, but the way this person said this to me was like, like they felt sad for me if I was religious or something. And I thought, you don't like. There's so much life. It's not about being religious. It's yeah. um, there's life in Jesus, like she was saying. And just people's people go to a place because I think Christians have created a bad rap for mm -hmm. Jesus, which really is a bummer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that you are religious or it's a bunch of laws and rules and regulations when there's so much freedom in Christ. But I think some of that's a mist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I also, just hearing that, um, it's really real to me <laughs> because so much of my identity was in church. Mm -hmm. Growing up, pastor's kid, then ordained pastor myself, and then married to a pastor and just... Pastor, 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 church. <laughs> so many pastors. <laughs> and so my identity was in that, which is why this metamorphosis from like the Abram to Abraham, you know, or mm -hmm. you know what I mean, Jacob to Israel type metamorphosis I'm going through right now is so hard and painful. Yeah. Like, because it's really like I, I described it to a friend today, even it was like, What's going on in my heart and my mind is almost like taking a sledgehammer to like concrete yeah. and breaking up the foundation of the religion mm -hmm. of religious practices, rules, regulations and things like that, that I was accustomed to. That, that was my foundation of Christianity. And it's all just being like <laughs> broken up. So that some and, and I feel I'm in a, walking in a phase where I'm feeling the warmth of like new cement, being, you know, being mm -hmm. in the, the truth 
because I'm going through this phase of asking those real questions yeah. and learning who Jesus is for real. And that's so good. We have to ask those hard questions. Yeah. I mean, I've been through some really hard times in my life that I thought I wasn't going to rebuild that concrete. Yeah. You know, because I, I wasn't sure it worked. Yeah. It feels like... Was this was this a lie? Like you know, like yeah, was I wrong? Was I wrong? You know, like God is with us. Well, and these are the questions. Like, and I was literally talking to a friend today, and I'm like, he wants the more real your relationship is with him. You know, we were taught like, don't question God. Don't. That's not tr-. like he mm-hmm. wants us to talk to him. He wants us to have a relationship and let this be a depiction of how a conversation with God could be. Like where you're just really talking to someone. And I literally have asked him, like, if you're God with me, where were you? Right. Like, where were you when this happened? And I know my friend who lost her mom, where were you when she was dying? Or uh, and mm-hmm. people that are dealing with all kinds of things. So many people have died like recently and that I that I know that I'm like, where where are you? So God, if God is with us, where where are you? So like those are the questions yeah. that I ask him. But as I ask him that, I feel him drawing me mm-hmm. closer to him. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's all I've been wanting you to do is ask, because I know what's yep. in your heart. Yeah. Ask me the questions and I'll show you. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. And then he'll start showing me pictures of like him being there. Like I remember when I had the question about my ex, like, why didn't you stop him from having the affair? Like, why would you let him? And he gave me this vision, which it gives me chills even now, of him like pulling his shirt like, and my ex was like mm. re- going forward and I saw like, it looked like God like pulling the shirt. Trying like he didn't, yeah. so he was, I was there, but we have free will. Right. So it's like, God is with us, but he's not going to force himself on us. Right. And so we have to ask those questions. We have to grow that relationship in order for that to really come why, to, to fruition. Why do you think, why do you think Christians are like that? Like, why is that our go-to to become, to, to make it more about judgmental opinions and stuff. And so we're, we're, we're not painting Jesus in the way that he should be. We should be showing them, ask the questions, ask the hard questions. He'll show you he's there. But we have created this like barrier to have mm-hmm. those conversations with people. Is it a fear or? So much of it is about guilt. We feel guilty mm-hmm. if we feel these things, if we think these mm-hmm. things. I shouldn't even be thinking that way. You know, I should just trust God and be a good Christian. Mm-hmm. And you can be a good Christian by asking God hard questions. Mm-hmm. Because just like you said, when when I've been there and I, I really felt like, I, I don't know about right. this. And I love the way you put it. I I could feel God drawing me, even in my anger, even in my resentment and saying, bring it. Yeah, Come bring on. it. I, I love you. I still love you. I don't, you know, I would say, you're not going to like hearing this. And he would say, I do want to hear it, you yeah. know, and I will still love you through it. And when you have that kind of love, that is what builds an even stronger foundation than I ever had before. And that's what gives me hope even about, like, if you have any, if people have teenagers, like I'm, I'm with my teenager right now and... Yes, I enjoy, I adore the age like where Peyton is. Like I I remember that, and I was I was also kind of like wanting her to grow up a little bit because I'm like I can't wait for us to like talk about boys and makeup and things like that. And now uh, okay, so <laughs> so right now we're in that that phase where you know mom and daughter kind of clash, mm-hmm. you know, because she's becoming a woman, and we've had a lot of life transition happen, yeah. you know, and so she isn't talking much to me, and so. I'm like, man, if God feels like this when we don't mm-hmm. talk to him, I don't want to make him feel how I feel when I don't mm-hmm. talk to my girl. Mm-hmm. I hate it. And all I want is for her to ask me the real questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ask me. Like if give you're me mad a chance. If you give me a chance. Like if you're mad at me because of something, talk to me. If you're hurt because of something, mm-hmm. talk to me. I, I might not I might be able to say like, hey, that's just what it is. Like I'm your mom and this is what, but that, and I'm like, if that's the relationship that God wants yeah. from us, we're like, that's why, that's, a great example. that's the, that's the, the depiction that we should be giving to people, a loving father, yeah, a loving not the parent, guilt, not mm-hmm. the gift, guilt. I grew up thinking God was like the wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. We used to talk about reverence, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I adore him and reverence him, but I was like, 
scared of them. I have a, a really, really strange. I probably should not share this Please story. Please do. I've already so, shared enough. <laughs> share your stuff. <laughs> Come on. A strange example of the way I look at God, and everybody else is going to go, "What?" Oh, please. <laughs> but anyway, so. Life is hard, Mm -hmm. and we deal with a lot of stuff in life that we don't want to touch because it's messy, right? So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna use some words that I probably shouldn't use, but we deal with a lot of crap (gasps) in life. Crap! (gasps) I say that because um, here's an example: our our two year old granddaughter Elsie's potty training. And Literal she, crap. okay, got it. <laughs> that's that's why the crap. So she's potty training, and um, <laughs> she's so encouraging, though. She's just a very encouraging child, and so she's potty training, and I'm helping her, and um, kind of wiping her, you know, cleaning her up after, and and she goes. Good job wiping my butt, Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> and you That's think, right, Elsie. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. See my work. I feel so much better about what I just did now. Before it's like, eh, and you know, but I kind of see that the way that it is in life. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of stuff that we have to deal with that we don't want to have to mm-hmm. do. But I feel like God is right there saying, good job dealing with the stuff that you have to deal with. I am not going to leave you. I'm going to be right here with you. I'm going to encourage you through it. Yeah. But it's not going to go away. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's really important. I don't want to go through this stuff by myself. I need all the help I can get. Yeah. I'm not expecting it to all be sunshine and roses and rainbows. And so you know, when we are dealing with with the messes of life that we have to clean up, I I want God to be there. You know, I want to hear, mm-hmm. good job cleaning up that crap, Gigi. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, she did not use that word. She said, clean, you know, wiping mm. my butt. But anyway, <laughs> I think that's really important is that God is in the trenches with us. He is. He's dealing with the mess with us. I think that some of the most beautiful times I've ever had with him are in the trenches because it's having those conversations. I just remember so many times c- crying on my bed, where are you? Just like you said. Yeah. Why have you left me? Why are we doing this again? And he always is there. Yeah. He always meets you there. And I, I think that sounds like if you're not used to this and this is not conversations you normally yeah, have. You're right. It sounds kind of like, well, that's so good for you. And mm-hmm. I'm so glad you heard from him, but that's not going to happen for me. But it will, because if you come to him, he's waiting for you there. So you can have that same kind of experience with him. Yeah. Yeah. And even when you say that, like, I just can remember and not even just remember, I, I have it often where I don't always feel like he's there. Sure. Even mm-hmm. when I ask mm-hmm. him. You know, and so for those, because I know that was something too that I was like, why, where are you? Because I didn't tangibly feel them. And that I think that that'll help people too, is to be able, even if it still feels like he's not there, you have to, you have a choice to believe that he is there. Mm -hmm. And for me, I I took a lot of this time where I didn't, I didn't choose to believe he was like, you know, I was like, I believe in God, but I don't know if he's in this situation. Like Mm -hmm. I'm talking through it. I'm trying to pray through it. I'm trying to still do things through, but I don't, it doesn't feel like it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was a moment like there where I was just like, maybe he's not here. And I just want people to know, like, that is not a fun place to be. It's, it's, it's hopeless. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I'd rather believe until I truly believe. I'd rather choose to believe until I truly believe and know that he's there, Mm -hmm. even when I don't feel it, than to, like, choose to not believe and just be hopeless. Right. Like, this is, it's just, it's like a dark hole. Mm -hmm. And that's where depression comes from. Like, that's, because I could feel myself spiraling because it's like, well, nobody cares and nobody this. And, you know, like, it. And it's not just being fun. It's really mm-hmm. like it just it's a, a hopeless place to be. So mm-hmm. it's better to choose to believe even if you don't feel it. Yeah. If if you're out flailing in an ocean and somebody throws you a rope, you're going to grab it. Yeah. Yep. Even if you don't know if they're going to be able to pull you in, if anybody's at the end of that rope. But if someone throws you an opportunity for hope. Grab it. Grab it. Why would you just let it float by and think, no, it's not going to do any good? No, you're Try desperate. It. Yeah. And if you're in a desperate situation, 
you're going to grab for it. So yeah. let, let's, again, get past all the Christianese and really explain how this whole thing works. People talk about being born again, and that's a real term, and it's something that we need to understand. So Joyce is going to explain more about this whole Christian life. What does it mean to be born again? Well, it doesn't mean that you sign up to go to a church somewhere and that you try to have behavior improvement. That's not what it means to be born again. Now, I want you to get a hold of this. When you're born again, God comes to live inside of you. Born again. <laughs> God comes to live in your spirit, and you are made alive in Christ. You become the home of God. Is that not exciting? If you're saved, say, God lives in me. God lives in me. Woo, I love that. That's enough to get you excited every day. You don't have to do anything special to receive Christ. He's already done everything that needs to be done. All you need to do is just whew, surrender. Now, I'm not asking you just to receive Christ. I'm asking you also to surrender yourself to Him. And there may even be many people here today that you feel like you have received Christ, but truth is, you've never really given yourself to Him. You know, this is not an invitation just to receive Jesus to kind of fix all of our problems. This is an invitation to change your mind, to repent, and to be willing to go in a totally different direction by the grace of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. There's power in the Word, so let me read this to you. For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made a partaker of Christ's salvation. And it comes through your faith. So the only thing that you need to do today is just say, I believe. I believe that Jesus died for me. I don't know how we can believe that because we didn't see it. We weren't there when it happened, but... It's amazing what happens when you have faith in your heart. You have faith to believe things that maybe to your mind don't even make any sense. I don't know how I know I wasn't there, but I know that 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 Jesus died for me. I know that. It's a settled fact in my life. Jesus died for me. It's not of yourselves. It's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. So this morning, you are being offered the most amazing gift in the whole world. So there it is. You talk about Christmas, you talk about the real Christmas. Yeah. It's this gift mm -hmm. that is so different than anything else that we can really fully even understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me, go ahead. I was just going to say, Caden is almost seven. And so we've had all these conversations about Jesus. and But now, like, I, it's time to have, like, the conversation. And I don't know if that's how it's going to work, but it's something we talk about all the time. But I was thinking, how do I make sure he says all the right words and in the right order <laughs> to make sure he gets Jesus in his heart the right way so that way he's, you know, like in there really good and doesn't yeah, fall out. Yeah, you want out. it to stick. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get him in all the nooks and crannies so I know where he's going to go. And so I, as I'm having these thoughts, I just kind of probably God spoke to my heart and said, Aaron, like you just have a conversation with him. And I... I'll be right there, and the words don't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be an eloquent speech that your seven-year-old says, mm -hmm. but what is his heart, and does, does he get the point, you know? Yeah. So it kind of flipped my perspective, too, like as an adult. Do I make it about sounding right and saying all the right yes. words, yep. or is it about, God, I believe you, I need you, forgive me, help me, yeah, and not, not make it so... Big. No, yeah, because that's totally, that was totally my thing. Um, mm -hmm. Being in, in church, I would stand on the stages and have to do the salvation prayer, mm -hmm. like where people repeat after me, dear Jesus, you know, you go through the whole thing. But then 
I would have almost panic attacks when I would go to like regular people, sure. <laughs> like at the grocery store or at the gas station, and wouldn't be, wouldn't even dare offer Jesus or offer a salvation prayer because I was so worried about saying the right thing. Sure. But to a point where I just prayed and asked God like years ago, I was like, God, just take all the Christianese out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. Like I don't. And to the point where I almost sound like I don't have a, a have good sense, but honestly, because I, sometimes I'm praying like. God, you 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 know my heart, like you know. It's like I, I'm I need help, you know. So seriously, like, but yeah. those are, he wants the real yeah. prayers and and the the because that's when true like redemption happens. Mm-hmm. That's when you be you go from your old self and be born into a new self and into that freedom. And I wish we and I'm glad we're talking about it. Just how freeing salvation is it is mm-hmm. it's not this like yeah rule driven like it, wah, that's wah. really a key point yeah it's just it's so much yeah we do get to learn about the things that he expects of us but the, the beauty is that jesus came to redeem us like yeah. there is no more need for a blood sacrifice he was the blood sacrifice and when god sees us he sees his son like once you ex- once you believe in the lord jesus christ you shall be saved that's what it says in acts like once you believe in the lord jesus christ, you shall be saved and you, he sees his son when he sees you and it's it's so freeing to know yeah. like even in my 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 stressful times when i'm having these moments of like unbelief or you know, or like warring with the things that are going on in life or a bad diagnosis or a job loss or whatever, like, and you're having those negative moments, like the good thing is to know once you're born in Christ, he sees his son. Mm -hmm. Like that's the gratitude I have with Jesus Mm -hmm. because he covers me even Mm -hmm. when I'm jacked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's so different when we flip it a little bit and don't look at it like I have to do this and God is going to be um, you know, giving me all these rules and regulations that I need to follow. And instead we flip it and say, God is showing me a new way of living that will make my life so much better. Yeah. So it's not about following rules. It's about someone loving you so much that they're helping you to have what He wants you to have, yeah. to have this life that will not be perfect, that will surprise us at times and hurt mm-hmm. us at times but he he has done something astounding mm-hmm. in giving us a way like you said to have a direct connection with the perfect living God because yeah. otherwise it's okay I'm going to go out and I'm going to find a goat and slaughter it right. you know no. I mean <laughs> yeah. I'm not made for that life exactly that's, that's <laughs> how so it was I'm so glad I'm not the, that Old Testament no I'm, Jay, Old Testament. I'm so glad that I'm not there and I could never kill a little animal that would no! be no so. <laughs> but anyway you that's can't. you know <laughs> so, she was talking about Ephesians chapter 2 and and it's just a great place if, if you dig into the Bible. Get Go there. Read what Joyce was just talking about. But um, continuing on for what she was saying in verse 10, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So this is so much more about what God has for us, too. Mm-hmm. That's the miracle in it, that He handmade us in a specific way, and He has good Things for us and yeah. things for us to do, which means purpose in our life. Mm-hmm. Which, how much do we all need that so desperately? Yeah. But we often look at it like, if I become a Christian, I might lose some friends, which is true. You know, if if I become a Christian, I'm not going to be able to do some of the stuff I liked to do. Yeah, which is true. Yeah. But it's a big trade off, and sometimes I, I think about it like when you have a wound mm-hmm. and you're you're bleeding and you have to get it cauterized. You know, mm-hmm. you have to you have to stop that bleeding. Sometimes we get so used to be wounded. Yeah. That we're so used to being wounded that we don't feel the pain anymore but we're still bleeding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have to do something to to stop that bleeding. And and that's what Jesus did for us essentially. Yeah. He came in and he said, "I'm I'm going to stop that bleeding for mm-hmm. you." Yeah. And it's it's overwhelming when you think about the power behind all it of is. it. This past year, I've really studied all of the different rules that we feel that there are. And like just, you read Leviticus? 
Yeah, no, I oh, haven't this. gotten there yet. I, that, <laughs> I'm not quite ready for that one yet. <laughs> um, that's a lot of rules. <laughs> just asking God, like, why, why uh, do we feel like it's all rules? Because you're, you're not a cruel God who just wants to dictate our lives. And so just spending a lot of time studying on this topic. And uh, what I came to realize, at least this is what I felt I saw, it's not so much that he's giving you this list of rules because this is how you're going to get into the kingdom of God and you mm-hmm. check these boxes. What he showed me was I, him saying to me, I love you so much. This is my very best for you. This is how you're going to live a life of freedom and experience the true fullness of your life in me mm-hmm. is by making these choices. It's not because you're very wrong and a terrible person if you do these things and I won't love you. It's it's not that at all, but I love you so much. This is my very best for you. So let me show you how to live the very best you, I yeah. have for you. Yeah. And I, just that yeah. flip of perspective made such a difference for me because it's not God demanding of us. It's God loving us so much that he came to heal us. He came to p- go to the places that hurt and heal my s- wounded soul. Yeah. He came to comfort me when I'm alone and it's not because he's mean. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. Like when you think about the rules, don't think of them as restrictions. It, he's literally trying to give us the keys to live that fullest life. Mm-hmm. I know if I ever told a lie before, that's stressful. Like, you know, to try to keep, keep up with a lie. It's a lot of work. Like, like, what did I tell um, her? And, and then, <laughs> like, <laughs> stressful. So don't lie. If you don't lie, then you don't have that. So it's like, it's not really a restriction. It's more of an enrichment. It's like, mm-hmm. these are things to say like, hey, these things, if you do, I still love you no matter what. Mm-hmm. But if you want to live the fullest life, like life in that more abundantly, mm-hmm. you'll want to do things that make them happy. Like when I love someone, I want to do things that make them happy. I don't want right. to make them upset. So it's, I just want us to really walk away from here, like to be able to share the good news of the gospel, to share the good news of Jesus being born even in a tough time to yeah. say like, there's hope, there's joy, there's freedom if you if you just say yes, if you accept yeah. them into your heart, and so it's 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 a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing yeah, to know. Is. Like, but that's not how we were taught. Like, I wasn't taught that. I was taught, baby. It was I was taught rule, 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 rule. And I watched the movie Left Behind, and I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> that's your childhood. A pile of clothes my, laying there, and everybody's it's gone. Like every time I saw Laundry Day, yeah. I'm like, ah! Oh no, they're gone. I'm like, Mama, you here? Did Jesus come back? Like, terrified as a kid. Hated laundry day. <laughs> oh, that's real funny. Think of my mom gone in the rapture. Like. I remember so many times coming out like in my bedroom at home and the house being quiet and not being able to find oh, anyone. It's happened. It's, it's happened. I've been me. left behind. <laughs> it was just, and those were, I mean, thanks, for, thanks to that, I stayed saved a long, long time. But as I mature and get older, I realize that what the relationship with Jesus really is. Mm, yeah. It's not scary, but it's, there's truth to that. He is coming back sure. to yeah. get us. It's not, it's not, oh, a, yeah. it's not fake. But we false. don't have to have that fear when we see a pile yeah, of clothes. Like, but we shouldn't, if you <laughs> we truly, can do our laundry. But that goes back to what Joyce is saying. Like, do, are you really, do you believe you've been born again? Yeah. Like, do you really can you believe? Can you answer the questions? Because if you can answer the questions, you don't have to think about that. Cause guess mm. what? You will be, those will be your clothes in a pile. Like you won't have yeah. to worry about being left behind you know and i know too there are a lot of people with with christmas coming or maybe you're listening past christmas but you still feel like you're in that rough seas and you're about to go under Mm -hmm. and think of this as that that life vest floating by you know (laughs) are you going to reach out and grab it are you going to reach out for that little bit of hope that can make a difference for you. So we're we're going to give you the opportunity, and that is our prayer today, that you can experience some of the stuff that we've been talking about, that even in the hardest times um, when all of us probably have asked the big questions and have really tested out this whole Christianity walk, and yet we're back here still doing mm-hmm. it because we know mm-hmm. that it makes a difference and it's real in our lives, and we know that it can be real in your life too. And so whether you need to come back to the Lord or you just need to be refreshed on this, um, listen to what Joyce has to say, kind of walking you through how all of this works and giving you the opportunity to grab onto that rope. 
So if you're here today and you say, Joyce, I've never surrendered my life to Christ. I want to be a Christian. I want to spend the rest of my life serving God. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want to have that intimate fellowship with God. Then I want to pray with you this morning. Or if you say, Joyce, I've backslidden. I want to make a fresh start. I want to pray with you this morning. Or if you say, Joyce, I'm just, I mean, I'm just religious. You nailed us this weekend. Just religious. And I really want to make a full-on commitment and be on fire for God. I truly want him to take over my life. I want to be born again. Then I want you just to slip your hand up and let me see where you're at. Come on. I want you all to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I love you. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died in my place. You took my punishment. You paid for my sins. You rose from the dead. And you're alive right now. Come and live in me. Wash me clean. Forgive me. Take my life. I give myself to you. I receive you. Take me just the way I am. Now make me what you want me to be. I surrender. I'm yours. And you're mine. I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm going to enjoy the journey. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise. Well, if you just prayed that prayer, then we have some more things that we want to give you because it's so important that you can really understand what's happening in your life. It's a miracle. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. So we want to help. Um, if you go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, we have a free download of a booklet called A New Way of Living. And it's got great information right from the Bible, but it's simple and it will help you really understand this. And also when you're there, you can find out more about the podcast, listen to some past episodes. But we wish you a merry, merry Christmas. We're so glad. You a merry Christmas. You, go ahead, sing it for us, that's Jay. It. That's all they get. Okay. That, well, that, <laughs> that, that was something. <laughs> oh, y'all want me to do something for real? No, that's okay. <laughs> oh, that, that's that's okay. Quiet. What's happening? <laughs> no, we're, we're so glad that you're with us. We're so glad that you've been with us through this past year, that you're one of our friends, and that we can share so honestly like this, that we can just talk the real stuff and not the christian stuff, and that we can even use the word crap now and then. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> Hot Thank you. Merry Christmas. Oh yeah, mine's Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.